There's already a monster here with a straw in it. Oh boy. Hi, my name's Rachel. Welcome or welcome back to this channel that I run. We are going to talk today about Poison Princess by Cresley Cole. Kill me. This video was a commission. I literally just, actually literally just finished this book and I'm bulk filming today and we're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about a lot of things today but I figured since I just finished this fucking awful book we would talk about it first because why not you know why not why not um okay <laughs> help i finished this book one star says i here's the synopsis number one new york times best-selling author cresley cole introduces the arcade blah 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 post-apocalyptic blah 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 16 year old evangeline evie green leads a charmed life until she begins experiencing horrifying hallucinations when an apocalyptic event decimates her louise and a hometown killing everyone she loves Evie realizes her hallucinations were actually visions of the future and they're still happening fighting for her life and desperate for answers she must turn to her wrong side of the bayou classmate Jack DeVoe but she can't do either alone with his mile long rap sheet wicked grin and bad attitude Jack is like no boy Evie has ever known even though he once scorned her and everything she represented he agrees to protect Evie on her quest she knows she can't totally trust Jack if he ever cast that wicked grin her way could she possibly resist him. Are we, are we, let me stop right there. Are we noticing a trend that so far we have talked a lot about what a man, a boy looks like and how she feels about him in the fucking synopsis, yet this is not a romance, it's post-apocalyptic fiction? What's happening? Who can Evie trust? As Jack and Evie race to find the source of her visions, they meet others who have gotten the same call. An ancient prophecy is being played out and Evie is not the only one with special powers. A group of teens has been chosen to reenact the ultimate battle between good and evil, but it's not always clear who is on which side. <sighs> we open up, and Evie Green is not our first narrator. Nay, no, it is, I think, a guy named Arthur? I don't remember his name. Doesn't matter. He dies in the end. By the way, this is gonna be full of spoilers, so if you're not ready for that, I don't know what to tell you. This is that channel. When I don't like a book, I yell about all the parts of it. Welcome! Also, before I say thank you to my patrons, I want to shout out specifically my patron Lex, who sent me an entire case of monster lex yes you're the best until monster sponsors me here we are <laughs> Thank you for being a friend to my Therapy Bills patrons, and those are Elena, Amanda, Ashley, Carlin, Claire, Ella, Eric, Harley, Jack, Jill, John E, Kate B, Quinn, Lee, Lex, Molly, Rain, SJ, Scarlett, Sierra, and Zachary. Thank you all so much for being a friend. If you want to join Patreon, the link is down below. You'll notice, by the way, that our main character's name is Evangeline, and this is, as the synopsis said, set in the bayou. So, is this pro frog print? Princess fan fiction? God, I wish. Evangeline? Mm. I, I wanna meet this girl. Where's she at? How you can miss her? Well, she glowing right up there in front of y'all. We open up on a guy, I'm gonna call him Arthur, I think that was his name, I don't really care either way. Arthur is a serial killer and he's living in post-apocalyptic times, which is referred to as After Flash or AF, and every time they refer to it as AF, I'm thinking, what? Day 217 AF? As fuck? What? Oh right, After Flash, because this is post-apocalyptic fiction and, and not a teen romance, I forgot. I keep forgetting because of, you know, the contents of the book. So we have Before Flash and After Flash. <laughs> Which is what we could also call the time before we knew Ezra Miller was not a good person and after Ezra Miller was not a good person. Anyway, speaking of Flash, we flash back. We, it's the serial killer is like, <laughs> I'm gonna kill this girl. And she's like, let me tell you my whole life story. I actually like that setup for, for fiction, but I didn't like it here. Nothing could have saved this book after a certain amount of misogyny. It just, it went too far. It went too far. We flash back, there's high school. <laughs> And Evie has returned from a summer not vacation um, at a mental institution for children because she has been experiencing visions and her grandma also experienced visions. Her grandma told her, Evie, you're part of a tarot card deck. You're part of the arcana. I don't know anything about tarot. I'm so sorry. And this book did not a good, did not do a good job of teaching me. <laughs> Help. And so she's got a boyfriend whose name was Brad, Dan? We're going to call him Brad. So Brad, who's 
was, you know, meaningless to the story, yet we spent so much time with him. Brad is her boyfriend, and he's just a nice guy. He's just a general, rich, nice guy. He's just a nice boy. Uh, he's useless to the story. He never should have existed. And she's like, oh, Brad, it's the first time I'm seeing Brad since I got home from my summer at the mental hospital. And she's like, I'm still taking my medication, and I'm gonna go to school. She's talking to herself about how, oh, I'm gonna see Brad, and oh, I'm turning 16 on Monday, so it's time for me, possibly, maybe, I need to start thinking about playing my V card. Okay. If you don't know, that is a euphemism for losing your virginity. And if you don't know, if I haven't made it explicitly clear on this channel, virginity is a social construct. It is not a thing. That is not a thing. And a hymen, not your virginity. We're going to talk about the hymen in a second again. Okay? Okay, so she's in her boyfriend's car and he drives fast and she's like, yeah. Okay. And then they pull over and they're making out and she is, I guess, wearing tight clothes or something. Well, along come these bikers, right? In come the bikers, bad kids, the baddies. And, you know, it's very... <sighs> It's, it's, it's very Greece, except worse. Nah, it's about as misogynistic as Greece, actually. Yeah. Oh, and it also features people that are clearly playing teenagers who are not teenagers, like this 40-year-old man in Greece. Similar to the cover of this book that I read, that's a 35-year-old man and a Blake Lively cosplayer. Those are not teenagers. Anyway, along comes that guy, the love interest, uh, except she doesn't know him yet. So he comes along with his friendos on bikes, and he looks at her through the window of her boyfriend's car and looks at her ass and she's like oh, he's looking at my butt and <laughs> it's like wow it's great okay anyway they get to school and the bikers show up and she's like no kids from the wrong side of the tracks oh no and it's a bunch of kids who live out in the bayou in a different parish because this is set in Louisiana and <laughs> Um, she says about one of them, the one token girl of the group, that her face is made up to an embarrassing degree. And that's when I knew, kids, that's when I knew that we were going to have unnecessary girl hate. Unnecessary girl hate for no fucking reason. Let's just hate every girl who is a possible love interest to the other boy that you, the main character, are into. Let's, let's just shit on other girls. Let's slut shame. Let's make fun of their appearance. Are they wearing makeup that is seemingly not you know, just enough to be sensible, but you, you think it's too much? This, I'm sure this is made up to an embarrassing degree, yes? Disagree. This is art. It took me 45 minutes. She says about the guy, uh, his hair fell in his eyes, and of course it was black, and of course he had gray eyes. Black hair, gray eyes is like the signature 2012-2014 love interest. And that he had a lantern jaw. One of you is going to have to explain what that means to me. It's a running theme here that I say, what does that even mean? And then somebody in the comments has to explain it to me because I'm so stupid. She, somebody tells her that they are juvies with records. Cool. His name turns out to be Jackson DeVoe. Thank you. Shh. But he also goes by Jack Daniels to his friends, which is funny because he also walks around with not only a knife in his pocket at a school, that would get him arrested, but also a flask of alcohol, not water. Which makes sense when it's this 35 year old man, you know, of age to drink, but an 18 year old walking around with a flask in a high school. A lot of shit went down at my high school. You know, there was a lot of drugs going on in the high school, smoking pot in the stairwells, typical stuff. You know, sometimes people would sneak off and like do some cocaine. It happened a few times. I didn't sneak off and do cocaine, but you know, other people did. And <laughs> I never remember anybody bringing a flask to high school. First of all, a flask is so, why would you make it obvious? Why wouldn't you just put vodka in a water bottle so that you don't get fucked with by the teacher? Teacher. Hey, look, it's water. I'm not in trouble and I'm still drinking at school. I bet you that happened, but a flat, it's just stupid. By the way, all of this nonsensical fake teen drama is going to be moot in a second because remember, this is post apocalyptic fiction. Her friend, who I think the name was Mel, says about, oh, her boyfriend's name is Brandon, not Brad. What are you going to do? Because it, it's about to be her 16th birthday and apparently you have to lose your virginity. Uh, what are you going to do about. <coughs> Brandon's hymen safari. Brandon's hymen safari. 
I rewinded it three times to make sure that I heard that correctly. This woman, Cresley Cole, sat down at a computer in the year of our Lord, I think 2013, and typed the words Hymen Safari and thought, good to go. That's literature right there. They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really. Mm -hmm. Authors, you're making it so hard for me to do my job. And she, the main character, answers, I'm not sure. I know everybody's probably wondering. Everybody's wondering if you're gonna lose your virginity? That just did not happen in my high school. I'm sorry. Unless it was somebody who like made very well known that they were a virgin. I I, I, why would anybody, I just, like, I just went around assuming nobody was a virgin in my high school because everybody was having sex, including me, because apparently, uh, boning or not boning is, um, hobbling a racehorse. The racehorse is the guy. So if you don't have sex with your teenage boyfriend, you are hobbling him because he is a racehorse. Okay. Anyway, so then we switch over to talking, thinking again about Jackson DeVoe, Jack Daniels, Flassaway. She, uh, uh, describes him in excruciating detail saying with those cheekbones he probably has Choctaw ancestry stop it they start sort of flirting and they're like uh, wrong side of the tracks meets you know bougie girl and she like says you're so creepy and you were looking at me you were looking at my butt like a sex offender and he's like if a girl's gonna show me her butt I'm gonna look and she's like I wasn't showing it to you but I'm not gonna breeze past the part where we just called him a sex offender with the fuck. God, I really wish this has been a <laughs> frog princess fan fiction. <laughs> Okay, so all of this is moot, right? All all of that, we spent so much time with that because she doesn't end up having sex with her boyfriend. She doesn't end up having sex in this book at all, by the way, because her virginity is going to be a major theme, I'm sure, throughout the series. Because for some reason, we just have to do that in fiction all of the fucking time. So what happens? Let's see it in my notes, by the way. I might have one on my phone. Oh yeah. <laughs> her friend, once again, before the flash says, uh, talks about her virginity and refers it, it refers to it as an endangered hymen. All right. So then they go to a party for her birthday. She says, uh, because Jackson shows up with his friend and, uh, Cotille, I think was, you know, the token girl in his group, his group of baddies who ride bikes. She keeps flirting with Brad. Brad? Is that the boyfriend's name? I already forgot. Brandon. Brandon. She keeps flirting with Brandon and she's like, oh, it's so slutty. Can't stand Cotille. She's the worst. She's so another girl. <laughs> all of this, again, is completely moot. We never really hear from Cotille at all. Uh, we never hear from Cotille at all. Yeah, no. No agency. Why would we? Anyway, she goes to her birthday party and uh, she, was, she doesn't have sex with her boyfriend there and she's still deciding. Well, anyway, um, Jack Daniels almost kisses her and it's like super heated moment and <laughs> her, her, his friend shows up and he's like, bro, we gotta go. But before this, he had handed her a drink and she says to him, is this roofied? And he says, it can be. They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine. That is not a joke. That is not a joke. There's nothing, I'm, this is me searching for the funnies. Not a single hee hee ha ha in my line of vision. There is nothing funny about that. Uh, sexual assault is not humorous. <laughs> I cannot believe I have to say this to another woman. Party gets broken up. Uh, Jack and his friends all leave in a rush. His friend's like, we gotta go, we gotta go. Then the cops show up. Uh, she runs off. Her boyfriend goes to talk to the cops. We never see her boyfriend again because the flash is about to happen. Except first, she is going to find out that everybody's phones got stolen by Jack Daniels' friends. Conveniently, they all left their phones in the car, in their cars, in their respective cars. A bunch of rich kids left their phones unlocked and they all got stolen. Anyway, okay. None of them had their phones on them. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> convenient plot device. Cute. So they all had their phones stolen. She did not have her phone stolen. What she did have stolen was her notebook full of drawings of the apocalypse, which she thought were all just weird hallucinations because she thinks that she's mentally ill. The mental illness rep in this is disgusting. It's great. <laughs> Haven't even gotten to the autism rep yet. I've been so busy talking about the misogyny. Help me. So then we move on to uh, the flash. But first she goes to Jack Jackson's house because she's like, he stole everything and I want my drawings back because he was talking to me about wanting to see them and I know he has them. She goes to his house. She 
goes into his house and he's like beating his mom's boyfriend almost to death and she finds the drawings they get into an argument he throws the drawings her and her friend Mel pick them all up they go to her house all of a sudden her mom is making some popcorn and then all of a sudden the apocalypse happens it was the popcorn that did it and she's like I need to call Mel but I can't her friend who just dropped her off but I can't because all their phones conveniently got stolen <laughs> Oh, it's so convenient. So what happens is the apocalypse. A bunch of places just get fucking incinerated. Anybody who was outside, I think, got incinerated. A bunch of people turn into zombies, which they call, I don't remember, we're gonna call them zombies. There is very little water. Most plants were destroyed. So everything's just sort of fucked and the apocalypse happens. Her boyfriend's dead, his family's dead, her best friend's dead, everybody's mostly dead. And it's just her and her mom in the house. Well, her mom suffers an injury and her mom knows that she's dying. Who should show up uh, Jack Daniels months later and and at this point our our main character here has figured out that she can use her blood to make plants grow which is great because they're starving so she starts you know making plants grow and she's getting visions just like she did before the apocalypse but it's like they're being sent to her because they are and what we get next is like a series of Jack Daniels showing up and being like let me help you and they argue because she's like like you know she says the wrong thing and he's like oh you think you're so much better than me which is like oh wow toxic masculinity I love that for me anyway her mom ends up dying from the injury they run off together she wants to go find her grandma who her mom had cut her off from seeing because her grandma tried to kidnap her and told her you're the empress in the arcana of the tarot deck and you have a part to play in the coming apocalypse and her mom cut her off and put her grandma in like a home for people with dementia which again Again, great that's great okay so she wants to go see her grandma who she just assumes is still alive despite having no proof I'm sure she's still alive we didn't end up seeing her in this book what happens next they go on and Jax is like here's how the world works now there's a militia made up of evil people we never see them on page there's like these two evil twins and their dad is the general and Clotilde that girl who was the token biker girl she got like assaulted by the twins and then um, killed herself so that was a time and her and Jackson flirt non-stop but fight non-stop and it's really boring they end up coming across another girl named I want to say her name was Selena yeah anything for Selena's <laughs> and she is the archer Evangeline our main character is like I know you from my visions and the archer is like I don't know what the fuck you're talking about I really want to bone that guy you're with though so of course there's another oh it's a girl and she's into the guy that I'm into and it's like but we already did this and I already hated it why do we have to do it twice right before Selena had shown up they were her and and Jackson were like getting hot and heavy and he pulled out a condom and she was like wait but I didn't want to have sex and then he called her a tease and it was just like a bunch of miscommunication which is their entire art which I hate I hate miscommunication it's so boring and stupid and could easily be fixed with a simple conversation but no why would we do that when we can just have boring surface level drama. <sighs> anyway they're in a house and she notices that there's no pictures of Selena there even though Selena claims it's her house this never gets addressed okay anyway she runs off because the guy that she keeps having visions of I think his name was Matthew oh, I'm really bad when I read audiobooks Matthew sends her a vision where he's like hey Empress um I'm about to drown except he communicates kind of weirdly which I thought was due to him like not knowing how to communicate through visions I thought that something was getting lost in like translation there no it's because Cresley Cole decided to make him autistic and doesn't understand how autism works okay so she realizes that um, Matthew is, is drowning and they somehow make it in time all the way to like northern was it Alabama Texas Louisiana I don't know we're somewhere in that area of the states right okay they get there in time they rescue him and he, they're like what happened to you well it turned out that his mom tried to kill him by locking him in the basement and said mother knows best because she was concerned that he would not stay put in the car because he was autistic. As a mom of a kid with autism I just you know I don't like it. Anyway um he has a bracelet that identifies him as autistic. Well in her infinite wisdom Evangeline says I'm actually gonna take this bracelet off because I don't think that I'll like how the uh, other people were with Selena and uh, Jack Daniels will treat him. They then proceed to treat him terribly which they could have 
not done if they would have said, hey, he's autistic and he doesn't understand certain social cues. Instead, what we got was they treated him like shit and called him slow and then he couldn't communicate properly, but it was very uneven because he's autistic, which is not how autism works. Why? He's trying to tell her about the other parts of the arcana. She's going to have to fight death. She's the empress. She keeps having all of these like visions and she realizes that some of the visions she's having are actually of herself, but a, like a past version of herself. And he says that they have to go find the other arcana. She just wants to get to North Carolina to find her grandma so her grandma can explain to her how to get out of this. Of course, that's ridiculous because her grandma was saying, you have to do this. And she's like, right, gotta find my grandma so I can find a way out of this. Okay, that makes no fucking sense. Her and Jack Daniels fight on and off nonstop. They end up accidentally, her and Matthew get caught by this militia camp. And there's this other guy there. I don't remember his name. He's, he's like 16 years old. We're gonna call him, I, maybe his name was Phineas. We're gonna call him Finn. So Finn is there and it turns out that he is the magician, which is another one of the arcana. It's interesting to me that the arcana and the vastness of the world all seem to be like located in this little part of the United States. Weird. Funny how that worked out. And he's like, I'm just here because I really want to kind of fuck this girl that's here slim picking. So, you know, I could get out of this at any time, which is really weird and stupid. Anyway, so they're all going to get, you know, brutally murdered, except for her, who's going to get brutally raped by this militia. Because by the way, women are scarce in the apocalypse. Yikes. You know who's not dealing with the scarcity of women though? Arthur, the serial killer. Remember him from the beginning? Yeah, he's got like three women in, or not women. He's got a 14 year old. Girls ages 14 to 18 in his basement. Okay. So Selena the archer, Finn the magician, Matthew the fool. He's the fool. The autistic kid, his arcana tarot card is the fool. Great. Fantastic. Love that. Wonderful. Great. So good. I bet you my neighbors just heard me yell so good. They're like, oh my God, she's at it again. So... <laughs> Uh, they they bust out of the militia camp because you know they're all overpowered because they're all magically arcana singularly located except for Jack Daniels who has no powers he's just a raging ball of anger so he fights his way out of everything it's great they get out of it they go they regroup and she's like Selena I know that you know you're part of the arcana and Selena's like I don't know what you're talking about this never gets addressed Finn I think knows Matthew definitely knows but <sighs> anyway she realizes that she is evil uh, our main character Evie has visions of herself being evil <laughs> like in past versions of herself and she's like that's what I'll become and Jack can never know or he will not love me because I'm disgusting first I have to figure out how to get rid of this and then he can love me it's like it's a literal apocalypse and you're worried about getting a boyfriend I realize that teenagers don't have like a fully developed prefrontal cortex but I feel like they would have better uh, <laughs> they, they would have better things to do than this during the apocalypse anywho so she <laughs> She ends up running away because she's like, for the umpteenth time, because she's like, he'll never love me. They get in a fight because she won't tell him her secrets once again. And he's like, I'm done with you. He's not done with her. So then she runs away and she runs into the arms of a serial killer. And we meet up at the end where we began, right? Okay. So then she's like, well, and Arthur had poisoned the hot chocolate that he gave her. And he's like really into plants because he's the alchemist, but also the, the lantern guy. I don't know. That's his his card. He's he's an arcana too. Magically they all just find each other. And so she she's like I knew that you poisoned me. But like we had flashbacks where he was like I'm wondering if she's lying or if telling the truth and if she I mean she's not showing me any of her powers. So you knew she had plant powers and you're this super smart guy and you're going over and over and over it and it never occurred to Arthur. This is like a really convenient thing for him to not think about. It never occurred to Arthur that if she is telling the truth and she does have plant powers that they won't work in poison form on her. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, sure, I'll suspend my disbelief even further. Suspend my disbelief into a different dimension for this book, I guess. So she um, slashes him with her claws once he, you know, captures her and takes her to his dungeon with all the other girls. She like rips out the claws, slashes him. She's like, hi, I was telling the truth all along, which obviously there was only one way this could go. She's like, you're an arcana too, Arthur. I knew it. I sensed you and I came after you. And then who should show up even though he says, I'm done with you? Jack Daniels. By the way, I forgot to tell you that Jack Daniels is whole time has been talking in French and every kind of time he calls her bebe instant laughter instant laughter yikes <laughs> 
<laughs> if you speak like Cajun French, like Bayou French, I would really be interested to know what you think of this book. I would be really interested. Anyway, moving on. So they all show up, Selena, Finn, Matthew, uh, Jack Daniels, they all show up. Of course, they like, you know, get rid of the, the, the serial killer guy. And what should show up on Evie's hand, but a symbol for the, the card of the alchemist, meaning she killed him. She's like, oh yeah, my grandma said this would happen. She said that I have to kill all you bitches and I don't actually want to do that. I just wanted to kill that one guy. Better make it to North Carolina so I can have my grandma tell me how to get out of this because apparently they all have to fight to the death and only one can survive? What? And uh, just like she thought, as soon as Jack sees her real self, he like makes the sign of the cross and he's like, oh God, she's horrifying. She murders people. She's got plant powers and she's like basically poison ivy, like red hair, leaves, poison. She's poison ivy. This is not Frog Princess fan fiction. It is poison ivy fan fiction in the bayou. Got it. Anyways, so that was terrible and horrifying. I've hated every second of it and I didn't want to read anymore, but I did. I finished it. God help me. Thank you for the commission. I appreciate it, but oh my god, one star. I hated this book. Terrible. I would not recommend it to literally anybody. Cool ideas in some parts, but they were so washed out by the um, misogyny and the bad mental health rep and the bad autism rep. I don't really have anything else to say. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching and leave your comments and questions about Poison Princess down below. Um, tell me uh, if any of this like is actually relative to real tarot card decks because they truly know nothing about them. Uh, once again, I grew up in Funnyland and we were taught that that is witchcraft and demonic. So I'm still having to unlearn all of that. <laughs> ah! Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye. Before I go, I have to say thank you for being a friend to my Potato Starch Marxists, Abby, Aiden, Alicia, Allison, Andy, Anita, Artie the Ninth, Ava, Bibi, Bethann, Ray, Caitlin, Carlin, Catherine, Kathy, Celia, Chris, CJ, Corwin, Corey, Darren, Deandra, Deborah, Diet Goth, Dorian, Ebby, Eden, Elise, Faith, Grace, Gracie, Haley, Hannah C, Hannah T, Helen, Horror Goose, India Inks, JT, Jen, Jen with two N's, Jillian, Joni, Jules, Kaylee, Kate, Katya, Keely, Kelsey, Kylie, Laura, Lauren B, Library of Scars, LP Calling, MK Martin, Maddie, Marcella, Marquita, Malara, Model RK300, Moog, Morgan R, Moth, James, Nicole R, Nicole T, Paige E, Paige P, Peggy, Pixel Stars, Rachel B, Rachel S, Reba, Ren, Rowan, Sarah, Scarlett, Shanae, Shannon, Shay. <laughs> Sorry, my six year old decided to chime in. <laughs> Sheena K, Shiny, Sean, Talia, Tiana, Ursula, Valentine, Winter, Writer A, and Yesenia. Thank you all so much for being a friend. Ooh.